Uh, I stopped there. And what's interesting about that country is that um, most people think when you say th South America, you, you think Spanish-speaking countries. It is not true. They don't speak, well, they might pass until we speak Spanish there. But they speak Dutch and English and some other languages there. So as I'm telling you that, hopefully, can we get the thing up top going on up there? So we went there. Oh, what was the best part about our cruise, by the way? The best part, guys, is that there's a 24-7 all-you-can-eat buffet. 24-hour all-you-can-eat buffet. They had at the, at the cruise Man, by the way, each of us had our own separate rooms. All right, I just want to be clear about that. Um, but we had a great time. Um, they had a big, big movie theater in the back of the boat. So every night there was a new movie being, being played. Um, there was a casino that they couldn't go to. Uh, I didn't go either because I'm a, I'm a Christian young man who does not use his money unwisely. But uh, I went to see the show at the casino they had there. It was a beautiful show. We saw Lion King there at the, at the, at the, at the show. But, uh, oh, yeah, there you go. This is my retro 90s uh, throwback look, I guess you could say, right? Hat backwards, my Stockton jersey from USA. Um, but let's go ahead. We'll get moving momentarily. What else happened on the cruise, guys, that was fun? What was the funnest thing for you guys on the cruise? Oh, yeah, the son tried to sneak out. He tried to sneak off the boat. Um, and um, we, we had to hold him back. Uh, he was trying to actually stay in his country. He said, no, 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 let's... Back on the boat there. Uh, what else was a good thing on the boat? Well, oh, yes, Janice almost drowned in the kiddie pool. Um, and, um, she decided to lay flat in the kiddie pool, and she asked the lifeguard to come save her uh, on the kiddie pool. So she was saved, no problem. Uh, she told, stand up, and she was saved right off the bat. Um, another favorite thing that would happen on the cruise ship, guys, was a good thing. Uh, oh, uh, during the cruise, I gave Pierce an apple to eat, and he, he said, I don't want to eat this. Threw it overboard and let, the, let some fishes have it. Um, but anyway, that was Pierce for you. Okay. Uh, oh, and if you guys want to go on a cruise next year, we're really planning next year another cruise this year. Next year, we actually want to go to Europe and Asia next year is the next cruise. So if you want to really enjoy it, come with us on the next cruise, and I can't wait to take the next bunch with us. Uh, unfortunately for this cruise that we didn't stop in the, any of the Caribbean islands this time. Um, that will be the another, another, another thing another thing for us to do. All right. Uh, wait, is that the right one? Uh-oh. Well, since we're at that one there, we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, I feel we'll have you go first because that's where one of your favorite places you went to was Honduras. And for... You many Americans who are here. Uh, Honduras is located where? You say with a question mark. <laughs> Central America, that's right. All right, so go ahead, Afia, come on up. You want to go to that one over there? Sure thing. And um, we'll get started from there. So Afia will talk about her time in, uh, in Honduras. So Honduras is officially called the Republic of Honduras and is in Central America between Guatemala and El Salvador. Yeah. Um, the people who live in Honduras, the ethnic composition of this country, is Amerindian, black, including black Caribs, white, other people, and a group of people called Mestizo. Mestizo are a group of people who are mixed with European descent and indigenous peoples. Yeah, okay. The, cult the art and architecture of the pre-Columbian and Spanish colonial periods are strongly evident in Honduran culture. One special interest is the great Mayan city of Copan, which represents the height of the Mayan classic period. There is a gap between the wealthy and the middle class in Honduras. 
The poor is pronounced as impoverished families. They live in rural areas, and they usually live on small parcels of land. Yeah. So this is a little history about Honduras. When the Spanish arrived to colonize Honduras, the land was occupied by a variety of indigenous peoples, the most advanced of whom were the Maya. Gold stimulated Spanish conquests of the, er of, the, of the area early in the 16th century. The development of the Spanish society in Honduras, in the Honduras area, was hindered by coastal attacks from pirates to the Caribbean Sea and eventually by a concerted British effort to control the coastal areas of Central America. Honduras gained independence from Spain in 1821 and from Mexico in 1823. So, yeah, this is the current slide of Honduras. They first had the first and third, the blue first and third lines were dark blue, but they changed it to turquoise. The national flag of the Republic of Honduras has been redesigned a few times throughout history. The first flag they made in 1898, and the last flag was in 19, 1949. The design primarily stayed the same. A new flag was used that featured the tri-band design with five stars. However, the stars weren't blue, but they were yellow. The colors of the flag represent characteristics of Honduras. The top and bottom bands, as well as the five stars in the center, are blue. This color of blue represents the, the Caribbean Sea, the Pacific Ocean, and the sky. The color blue is also a symbol of brotherhood. The color white is used for the middle band. This color is used to symbolize land between the sea and the ocean. It also represents peace, purity, and prosperity. And the next slide, you'll see the different designs of flags throughout the years. So one of the things Honduras is famous for is because it's on the southeastern end of the Mayan world, there are several Mayan archeological sites in the department of Copan. In Western Honduras, the most outstanding is the Copan arche archeological site. This site boosts the most elaborate high relief sculptures in the Mayan world. The most popular sport in Honduras by far is football, similar to most countries around the, around the world. Honduras is known for its rich natural resources including minerals, coffee, tropical fruit, and sugarcane, as well, as well as for its growing textiles industry, which shares the international market. And this is one of the Mayan temples you can find in Honduras. Can you go back to the famous people, please? So the man on the left, his name is Carlos Pavan. He is a Honduras former professional footballer who plays as a striker. He's regarded as one of the best Honduran footballers in history, in history and by most and by far is the nation's greatest player. On the right is a musician by the name of Aurelio Martinez. He's a musician as well as a politician. He's a singer, percussionist, and guitarist known for his Garifuna music and is considered a cultural ambassador. There are many typical foods associated with the various regions of this country, including sopa de hombre, which is the man soup, or other seafood dishes in the south, queso con chile, which is cheese with chili peppers, and in the west, cassabe, which is mashed cassava, among the garifuna in the north. 
They also eat tamales and fried cassava and pork, also with tortillas, beans, plantains, and rice. The, the Plato Tepico is Honduras' national dish. And if you go to the pictures, um, one on the right-hand corner is their national dish. Then they have the cassava bread and the soup, and then the cheese, the chili with cheese. And on the right-hand left, the right-hand bottom corner is torejas, which is a type of cake or dessert that they usually eat. So some fun facts about Honduras is that the name Honduras is Spanish for great depths in reference to Christopher Columbus's remark on the depth of the ocean off the Honduras coast. The so-called football war or 100 hour war was fought between Honduras and El Salvador in July 14th to 18th in 1969 as a result of an intense soccer rivalry. Though its roots cause involved land and immigration. The Mayan empire is known for its presence in Mexican history, but stretched as far, as far south as Honduras, where archeological artifacts remain. So the next country we visited is Bolivia. Bolivia is a country lo located in West Central South Africa, extending 950 miles north-south north and 800 miles east-west. Yeah. Oh, South America, yeah, sorry. Bolivia is bordered to the north and east of Brazil, to the southeast of Paraguay, and to the south of Argentina to the southwest and west of Chile and the northwest of Peru. The ethnic composition in Bolivia is also, they have indigenous people, white people, they also have Metizo people and their other ethnic groups. The largest Indian groups in Bolivia are the Aymara, the Quechua, and the Guarani. The, Guarani. the Aymara speak a guttural language and live mainly on the north and central Altiplano. The Quechua are direct, are direct descendants of the Inca and are found in southern Altiplano and on nearby mountains as well as, the, as valleys. Bolivian society embraces a mixture of diverse and extraordinarily rich native Indian cultures as well as Iberian culture brought by the Spaniards. They express themselves through dances and songs that blend indigenous and European influences. The mixture of cultures is also revealed in the music and a hybrid instrument that is similar in shape to the guitar called the charango, but it is much smaller. Um, so one interesting thing about Bolivia is that they actually have two national flags. So the first flag, the first flag of Bolivia. Is red and it's the first band is red and it stands for the brave soldiers. The green symbolizes fertility and the yellow symbolizes the nation's mineral deposits. And the second flag is multicolored with red, orange, yellow, white, green, blue, and violet. The red represents the earth and the Andean man. The orange is society and culture. Yellow is energy. White is time. Green is the natural resources and the environment. Blue represents space and the heavens. And violet represents the Andean government and self-determination. So one tourist attraction that in Bolivia is a lake. It is one of the highest lakes in the world and is the highest and is a very large lake and it's very navigable for boats. Yeah. 
One other tourist attraction is the name of the lake is Lake Titicaca. Bolivia's Salar de Uni is considered one of the most extreme and remarkable visiting places. It is basically a salt flat. One of the one of the famous people from Bolivia is called James Escalante. He was a Bolivian American educator and is remembered for teaching calculus to students in East Los Angeles. He had, he had an illustrious career and a much respected figure in teaching. The film Stand and Deliver is based on his life and he received the Presidential Medal for Excellence in Education in the year 1988. The woman on the right hand side, her name is Zelma Ugar. She is a Bolivian politician and folk singer with international recognition and, and influence. She served as the Minister of, Cult of Culture and Tourism under the Bolivian President Evo Morales. So the national dish of Bolivia is called salteña. It refers to a baked Bolivian empanada made with beef or chicken mixed with olives, potatoes, vegetables, hard boiled eggs, raisins and spices in a sweet and spicy sauce. And those are just some other foods in Bolivia. So some fun facts about Bolivia is that it has one of the highest degrees of income inequality in the world. It has two capitals, one is called La Paz and the other is Sucre. Bolivia is home to 37 official languages and Salar de Iuni is the world's biggest mirror. Simone Bolivar, which is the one who, I guess, discovered Bolivia is known as the liberator. He's known as the liberator because he liberated or helped liberate four, four territories, New Granada, Venezuela, Quito and Peru. Um, Bolivia is a landlocked country, which basically means it is a country that does not have a territory connected to an ocean or whose coastlines lie on basins. That's it. All right, so the country I got is Mexico. Um, so Mexico is known for a rich culture. Mexico, hear, you hear me? Okay, okay. Mexico is known for a rich culture. Mexico <laughs> is known for rich culture, ancient ruins, dazzling beaches, and incredible cuisine. Everyone knows the most famous Mexican dish, obviously. But everyone knows the most famous Mexican dish, obviously tacos, yeah. All right, so the location. Mexico shares a common border throughout the, the northern extent of the United States. Mexico is bounded to the west and south by the Pacific Ocean, to the east by the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea, and to the southwest of, the Guat of Guatemala and Belize. And the flag, the flag has three colors, is green, green, red, and white. The green symbolizes independence. Green, green symbolizes independence. White is for Roman Catholic religion, and red is for union. And then the three colors together are called the three guarantees. And then some famous people from Mexico, we have a boxer known as, um, uh, what's his name? Santos Alvarez or Canelo Alvarez. He's a Mexican professional boxer. He has won multiple world championships in four weight classes from light middleweight to light uh, heavyweight. 
And then Jennifer Lopez, also famous over there. And here too. Yeah, she's Mexican. Jennifer Lo Lynn Lopez, also known as J-Lo, is an American singer, actress, and dancer, but you know, she's part Mexican. And then some fun facts about Mexico. Some, some fun facts about Mexico is that 69 different languages are spoken there. And also the largest pyramid is over there too. All right. Cool. Thank you, Jose. Now we can go to Suriname. You're gonna see a picture of us going down the river. That's us in the boat right there. That was, oh, there he is. So, see, I, I didn't cut my hair yet. So that's me right there in the middle. Um, there's the sand over there and the guy in the front over there. So we were on the trip to Suriname. That's us. All right, let's go to the next slide here. Um, you can see that it's in the northern uh, east part of South America. Sounds kind of weird when I say that. You can see the countries that are around it. All right. The lovely one down south is Brazil. Uh, we, we had a good time there, but I want to talk about this place some more here. Let's keep moving uh, with here and uh, just share a few interesting things about it. Go ahead. Move that slide. All right. Perfect. So they have these wonderful things that we went to see. We went to see one preserve. You can see right there with the, with the sea turtles there. Um, the Galabi Coppa name Natural Reserve. And you can read for yourself there. Uh, unfortunately, when we went, obviously, we couldn't see any of the turtles um, laying their eggs. But the best time to go, you can see April. Um, also, um, on the top there, where you see the forest, um, it mentions that when we found out that most, well, not most, you see right there, reserve cut about 12% of the country's total land mass, which is pretty amazing. And that, to me, in the famous falls over there, are Raleigh Valley, Raleigh Valley, that's me in the falls right there. That's me right there in the fall. So we had a great time there in the fall. The water is putting my hair down. That's why it looks like I'm bald in the shot there. But that was me there having a great time. They're like natural steps on these falls. They're not big, but they're natural steps, which is pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. So wonderful foods they had there. I tell you, anywhere you go, South America, Caribbean, you're going to find rice and you can find plantains. Uh, needs to say they also had that too there. You can see the chicken, had to have chicken. And there's awesome dessert. I'm not a big fan of... Uh, I, said, I think it was acacia, as I say. I'm not sure how to say it right. Acai, whatever it is. I don't know how to say it. But it tasted fantastic. That's all that mattered to me. Um, so we had that little put I, I had the pudding there. Uh, it was like a little pudding. And we had those, some cassava crumbs on top. Delicious. Um, don't mind the Coca-Cola you saw over there. Oh. All right. Some famous people. Jimmy Smith. I don't know if you know who he is. If you're a big law and order type person, you're... you're Oh, alum of Brooklyn Cause, there you go. So my Brooklyn Knights who are... Every mic I get shorts out on me. I don't know what's going on. And also, um, Jimmy Floyd Hasselback, um, great soccer player they had from their country who played for the Dutch and other, other teams as well. And then also some fa fun facts. This awesome land, and we saw it just walking in the park, this tap here, walking in the park. We took a it is the largest land animal there. That they, they have on their land, guys. Their land. Not the largest land animal in the world, but on the, walks on their land. And then I got to meet um, Anthony Nesty. There's an older picture of him. He was their first gold medalist in, um, in swimming. So in the butterfly event, the first gold medalist, I think it has two more bronzes after that, was him. So some fun facts about the country there. And this is their flag. Oh, hit it again. I'm sorry. This is the original flag here. Each, each star represents a different ethnic group of the country there. And you can read it yourself there. The, the, white, the white star was the, the Europeans. Um, the blacks represented the Creoles. And so we can see there the red star and the Chinese, the yellow. But then they changed it over back in, I think it was in 75, I think it was, I forgot. And they changed this flag here. You can read for yourself what it stood for. But they've changed the whole thing. They put that one star for the whole entire group of the, everyone there um, they wanted to symbolize there. So that right there was my trip to Surin Surin Suriname. And uh, I'll let Yanis go next on her escapade. Okay, so while we were on this trip, we actually went to Panama, which I found very fantastic, right? 
So Panama, what's funny about it and its flag is the fact that <laughs> Panama, yeah. <laughs> In 1863, they were controlled by Colombia, but later got their independence, and their flag was exactly like the Colombian flag. So they were like, uh, I'm not feeling this, so they changed it a little bit. However, they were conquered by, they were later conquered by the Spaniards, and in 1903, they ended up changing their flag again to fit the Spaniard situation, but then they didn't like that again. So then they made their own flags, which is why they have two independents, which is interesting about Panama. Right now, Panama is located in Central America, which is the border of Costa Rica and Colombia, which is situated between the Caribbean Seas and the North Pacific Ocean. Panama has a lot of famous people that are in America, actually, right? We have former NBA, NBA star Ronaldo Blackman, who actually played for the Dallas Ma Mavericks. And the Knicks, and the Knicks yes. <laughs> And then we also have Carlos Ruiz, who played for Major League Baseball, right? He played for the Dodgers, the Phillies, and the Seattle Mariners, right? Okay. A fun fact about Panama is that, so its sun rises on the Pacific Ocean, right? And it sets on the Atlantic Ocean. Pretty cool, we got to see that. It was very nice, very lovely. Mm -hmm. We do have photos, but unfortunately, my things were taken from customs, so I couldn't take them with me. Right, and then also, uh, Panama is actually one of the best uh, areas to be in when it comes to engineering and architectural structures. With um, its transit, that's one of the, one of the most things it's famous for. You can like travel through the Panama Canal, go scuba diving, and other things like that. Right? I also had the option, I also ha we also had the opportunity to go to Ecuador, right? Now Ecuador is also another interesting place that was also taken up by Spain, right? And they later leave, ended up leaving Spain. <laughs> yeah, they ended up leaving Spain and doing their own thing, creating their own flags, right? Now Ecuador is a country that is located on top of the equator, which is why it gets its name from Equator, Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's um, on the South American's west coast, and its diverse landscape compasses the Amazon jungle and the Guadalupe Islands. Right. Now, uh, Ecuador also has a lot of famous people with Andres Gomez Santos being a former professional tennis player. And he even was one of the first Ecuadorians to ever win the men's French Open in 1990. And his son is actually his successor, who is actually doing the same thing right now. Right? And then fun facts about Ecuador is that it has the closest, it is the closest, it has the top, highest mountain closest to space itself to space. So its mountain is closest you'll possibly ever reach to space if you don't go, right? And then Ecuador also has one of the largest uh, volcanoes to ever exist in the world. Oi, tudo bom? As I said, hey, how are you? Um, <laughs> Brazil, amen. Okay. So, um, Brazil is basically located on the east part of the South America continent. It is also the largest. Um, country basically in the continent also the um, what is it has the biggest forest known to us the amazon rainforest or also the biggest river which is the amazon river <laughs> the flag i don't know if it's up yet 
Um, okay, so the flag of Brazil, um, the green color is a symbol for the floral and faunal for Brazil. The yellow represents the gold because they're very rich in most of their goods. Um, the blue globe and the star symbolize the nights that fill the sky and the constellations because there's they're not like the city where it has so many lights and you can't see any of them. Uh, next slide, please. So Brazil's also known for the um, where is it? Okay, whoops. Okay, so the statue over there, which is uh, the Cristo, uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I say it wrong, Cristo Redentor, the statue, um, Amen, for Jesus. Um, also, they're also known for the the salt area over there, which is uh, the Leso. I don't know how to pronounce the last name, but they did film a Marvel movie there. So yeah, they did. Um, and then they also have the river and rainforest as well over there. Yeah. Okay, some fun facts. In Brazil, they speak over 180 languages. Um, they like to multitask. Um, another one is that the oldest tree in Brazil was known to be born about 1,000 years before Christ. And they keep it there and like to have it as a tourist site. Another fun fact is if you were to meet a Brazilian woman, preferably an aunt or a mother, their, very f their way of being very friend friendly is by poking your butt, okay? Uh, <laughs> it's a way of greeting your family. Um, they're very friendly people, very social and interactive people. So please do not take that the wrong way. You do not go up there or any, do any of that stuff. Yeah. Next slide, please. Some of the famous people, which is also Giselle, she's a very famous model. Um, do not pay attention to her husband. He's a horrible man. <laughs> and then we also have one of the soccer players, which is Neymar. And, <laughs> Ame. and he's basically, I want to say, one of the biggest soccer players, in my opinion. So, yeah. So, next place that we went to was Belize. Um, <laughs> um, Belize is basically located right next to Mexico on the western part of the Caribbean. So we were able to pass by the Caribbean. We got to skip everyone else there because we could care less because we wanted to go somewhere else. Um, their flag. So the blue represents, um, the red and blue colors represent the unity of the people. They like to be very um, together and work together. The 50 olive leaves on the border around the perimeter of the coat of arms symbolize their independence in 1950. And they, um, they began their quest of independence. And the tree is, represents the country's economic foundation for also their wealth that they have. Um, they're also famous for their, the second largest barrier reef, so um, you can go scuba diving, which we were able to do. It's very dark, extremely, um, and also they are known for most of their cultural heritage from like the Mayans, Creole, and all that other stuff. Um, fun facts was that um, Belize has over 900 Mayan sites, one of the biggest sites for the Mayans um, in the world. And Belize is also called the Jew of the Heart of the Caribbean because they have the most um, tropical beaches nicely. And most of the tourist people like to go there to have their honeymoons. Yeah. Um, some famous people was Andy Pelicho. I, I don't, sorry, forgot to pronounce his last name. He's, uh, he likes to write country a little, likes some more pop music. And then we have on the bottom, Love a Boy. Um, he does a lot of rock and rap. So. Um, and two more things about Brazil. I have to. I'm so sorry, Dusan. Um, we enjoy our carnival. We really do. We like to get to our parties and enjoy ourselves. And we love to have our brigadeiros, which are little things you'll always find at a Brazilian party. Little small balls. And panji queijo. Sorry, Mr. There's none for you, so you can't have any whatsoever.
Miss Bo, why you always gotta be like that? Always on me for no reason. Like, all right. Y'all, y'all are gonna have to forgive me because I haven't spoken Spanish in a little while, so I might very well mess up the pronunciation. So these were my two favorite countries. We have Pais de los Poetas, Chile, the country of poets. All right. Now, before I start, one thing to know about Chile is that its demographics are kind of wonky. It's, it's mostly white and non-indigenous people, but then you also have the Machapuche, which are kind of like the main indigenous group from Chile, and then you have the Amara and other indigenous groups like the Rapa Nui, uh, Likan Antai, Quechua, Kola, and others that I'm unable to pronounce. Okay, so does anyone know what that up there is? That is Rapa Nui, or better known to you all as Easter Island. It's a small Chilean territory. It's found all the way in Polynesia, so we didn't get to go visit it. But it's a little volcanic island, and it's the farthest of all the Chilean territories. It's best known for its majestic Moa statues, like those big rock guys up there. And, and what's surprising enough is that they have full bodies under them, which is making them wonders of engineering because they were able to move the big rocks and carve them and then put them in the ground, All right? Next slide. All right, um, one thing to note about Chile is that it is the longest country in, well, longest country in South America. It's right there on the edge and, it also, and it's also the narrowest country in the world. All right, it's located in the southwest of South America, right next to Argentina and Bolivia and all those other great places. Now for the Chilean flag. Uh, the flag of Chile, or La Estrella, or La Estrella Solitaria, was adopted in, 19, in 1817 during the fight against the Spanish for independence. Uh, it was used for the Oath of Independence in 1818, and it replaced both Patria Vieja and Patria Nueva. The star in the Chilean flag represents Chile's independence from Spain. The red bar represents the blood spilled for independence. The white bar represents the Andes Mountains, and the blue represents the sky in the Pacific. Now, for those of you who follow soccer religiously, which yeah, Mr. McDonald. Uh, he is a Chilean football player, and he plays center forward for many football teams, including FC Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona. And the Chilean national football team, as well as many others, including Arsenal. All right. Uh, next up, we have Michelle Bachelet. Uh, Veronica Michelle Bachelet Jurea is a Chilean politician, and she's had the honor of serving as United Nations High Commissioner for human rights since 2018, as well as being the first president of Chile to be reelected since 1932. She's also a physician who studied military strategy on a university level. So let's hear it for female presidents. Wow, nobody? Uh, next up, we have the Atacama Desert. This is probably one of my favorite spots in all of Chile. Uh, the Atacama Desert is the driest non-polar desert in the world and is the only true desert to receive less precipitation than polar deserts and has the largest fog desert in the world. That means it receives about, I think it was one millimeter of rain per year. And for any of you, you might have to go get a road to see how little that is. It also has sterile ground, which means nothing can really grow there, as well as it has what's considered extraterrestrial soil because the soil samples from the Atacoma Desert are very similar to the soil samples from Mars. And so for this reason, NASA uses this desert for testing their drones for Mars. It's also been used to record many, many space-based movies in Mars, like for example, Space Odyssey, Voyage to the Planets. And there's also the, the Chinicoro mummies, and it's great for astronomy, as you can see those pictures, because of how far it is from lights and stuff like that. Now for those of you who know I love animals, I also got to see a bunch of Chilean animals while we're out there in the desert. Like for example, up there you have the vacuna, which, and vacunas have the softest fur in the world, as well as the guanaco, the pudu, the calpeo, which is that little wolf-like thing up there, and Andean condor. 
Next up. Next up. Next up, we have Gabrielle Minstrela, who is the lady over there. And we, uh, Lady Lucilia Goldoy Agas Alcigaga is also known as Gabrielle Minstrela. She was a diplomat, educator, and humanist. And she was most notably a Nobel laureate due to her work with literature. More specifically, for how her lyric poetry, which inspired by powerful emotions, has made her a name and symbol for the idealistic aspirations of the entire Latin American world. Next to her, we have Pablo Neruda. He was a former senator of the Republic of Chile. Pablo, he, he was also a diplomat poet who won a Nobel Prize in Literature in 1971, two years before he died, as well as he won this prize for poetry that with the action of an elemental force brings alive a continent's destiny and dreams. All right, not for my home. The land of many waters, Guyana. Do you don't, you better put your head back up. No, no, you already had your time, Mr. McDonald. All right, so up here, I see, because Guyana is not so famous, I couldn't find just one good thing about it. So up here we have, on, uh, up here we have Kaitro Falls, which is the, the largest single drop waterfall in the world. And by that, I mean it goes all the way down to the longest, all right? Uh, next to it, in the middle, we have Mashamani, which is Ghana's celebration of independence. It, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the, the carnival for Brazil, and it comes, and it comes from the Amerindian word, which means work well done, all right? And then next to it, that the little gold thing is because Guyana was believed to have been El Dorado. So a guy named Sir Walter Raleigh came to Guyana and explored trying to find the land of gold, all right? All right, next please. All right, Ghana is located in the northeastern part of South America. It's well, kind of northeastern, it's more central north. But it is in between Suriname and Venezuela and above Brazil. That means that we have part of the Amazon rainforest flowing through us. All right, uh, next up. All right, Guy, the Guyana flag. Okay, uh, so the red represents all the blood that was spilled for Guyana's independence from, from England. The black represents Guyana's people and our, and our strength. The gold represents Guyana's mineral wealth. The white represents our flowing rapids and our waters. And the green represents the forest of Guyana. Yeah, cricket. Uh, now, I chose this guy, I chose this guy because in Guyana we have a saying, especially when people have bad grammar, Kenai was a football player. Uh, so this guy's name is Rohan Kenai, and he was born on December 26, 1935. He was born in Port Moran, Burbies, in what was then British Guyana. Now, throughout Rohan Kenai's career, whether at, the con whether at the county level or the test level, he was in the midst of great players, and it speaks volumes for his own ability that he sparkled as brightly as the gems around him. He was, the, he was the captain of the West Indian cricket team for a short period of time, and one of the best bowlers, all right? Uh, next, please. Uh, I know Ms. Ball would probably know who this person is. Uh, one of my favorite old-time singers, born on March 5th, 1948, he is currently 74 years old, Mr. Eddie Grant. Nothing, Ms. Ball? Really? Wow. All right, he was born in, he was born in Pleasance, which is a very small place in Guyana, and he was born Edmund Montague Grant. He is a Guyanese British singer and songwriter, and he was also a multi-instrumentalist, and he was known for his genre-blending sound 
and his music was blended with a bunch of different types, like for example, pop, reggae, soca, and he also helped create a new genre called ring bang. Now, I didn't have a chance to listen to it because I was too busy with my family, but, you know. And he, he was also known for his, one of his most famous songs, a platinum record, uh, Electric Avenue. Yeah, there we go, Ms. Ball, yeah. All right. I, I'm not going to sing it. I, 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 okay, go, go back, please. And it also, and he also created the, his 1988 anti-apartheid song, my favorite song, well, one of my favorite songs, Give Me Hope, Joanna. You, you don't know that one, Ms. Ball. Yeah. Uh, next, please. All right. Up there, I have some... So some very interesting facts about Ghana, like for example, uh, Ghana's language. So even though Ghana's official language is English, and we're the only English-speaking country in all of South America, uh, Ghana has what's kind of like a sub-language. It's called Guyanese Creole, and it's basically a derivative of English. No, Unique, it does not have French. It's called Creole because it's a mix, all right? Yeah, it has, it has aspects of English, it has aspects of Yoruba, it has aspects of Urdu, and, and a bunch of other languages. Uh, now, 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 if y'all ever hear me get, if y'all ever hear me get mad, th this is probably what you'll hear start coming out of my mouth. Uh, let me try to break it down for you. Uh, uh, wow, okay. Please, please, please don't try him as well. Please, please, please stick to, to, to um, what's it called? Um, the other one. Uh, next, please. And now for why Guyana has brown water. Now, Guyana's brown water is a great attraction. Don't worry, it is perfectly clean, perfectly safe for you to drink. It's not dirty, Mr. McDonald. The reason why Guyana, the reason why Guyana's water is brown is because it has a high level of silt it has a high level of silt, which is a mineral found in the earth that's carried in from the Atlantic Ocean. And, it, and all of Guyana, well, not our drinking water, but, but all of Guyana's natural water can be found to be brown. Like, for example, the Essequibo River, the Demerara River, and all, the, and all, all of our other rivers and estuaries. All right? Hello? Okay. So I'm doing Canada and Venezuela. Okay, let's start with Canada. Canada is located in the top half of North America and is bordered by three oceans, the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Arctic. Its 10 provinces and three territories extend from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and northward into the Arctic Ocean, covering over 9.98 million square kilometers, making it the world's second largest country. And the capital of Canada is Ottawa. So Canada is known for ice hockey, which is its national winter sport. Um, it's considered a major component of Canadian culture. Um, it's home to the first organized ice hockey league. Um, Canada is all also famous for its maple syrup. It produces 71% of the world's pure maple syrup. Next slide. Um, this is the Canadian flag. It consists of a red field with a white square in the center and a maple leaf also in the center. The red, f the red in the flag symbolizes prosperity and hope. The white represents peace and tranquility and the maple leaf is a symbol of pride, loyalty, and courage. So, so, there are many well-known people that come from Canada, like Drake and Ryan Reynolds. Um, 
a fun fact is that Canada has two official languages, French and English, and also 75% of Canadians drink milk out of a bag. Um, even Costco sells bag milk, so, yeah. All right, Venezuela. Venezuela um, is located at the northern end of South America. It lies along the Caribbean Sea as well as the Atlantic Ocean. Um, yeah, um, it's famous for its natural gas and the Orinoco River. Um, it's the longest river in South America at 2,250 kilometers. This is the Venezuelan flag. One sec. Um, it consists. It consists of a horizontal triband of yellow, blue, and red. The yellow represents wealth and riches of the land. Red symbolizes the bloodshed in attaining independence from Spain. And the white stars represent the seven provinces of Venezuela that united in the War of Independence. Um, these are two famous people that come from Venezuela. We have Gabby Espino. She's a, um, a model and actress. And we have Carolina Herrera. She's um, a fashion designer. Um, two facts is that Venezuela has more Miss World um, wins than any other nation, and it's also home to the world's largest rodent, the capybara. Awesome. Guys, we're going rapid really fast. Right, we, we started in New York. We worked all the way around. We finished in Los Angeles, flew back over to New York. This is our United States of America right here. Beautiful country. Let's keep moving right here. Uh, all right, there's our flag. Awesome about our flag, guys. It was so amazing. We found our flag on the moon. You can find our flag. Oh, we're too far, man. Too far, too far. Also, we found out what's interesting about the U.S. is that at nighttime, the flag must go down. Um, only if you have proper lighting for it is allowed to stay up. That's why you see this, is Rockefeller, this was at Rockefeller Center. Um, the flags were there. And we all know that 13 stripes are what, again? A little American history? The 13 original colonies, um, and then we know the stars are our states. 51 stars, right, guys? I just want to make sure we're alive, because some people don't know how many stars they are. Um, the U.S. is famous for many, th many, many things. Um, as you see there, we have the Grand Canyon, New York City. Uh, we're v there are entertainment um, industries very big around the world. Um, I didn't put Yankees just because it's Yankees. But it's also, when people think of America, they think of baseball as well. Let's keep going through. Some famous people. I try to incorporate a lot of different people up there that are up there. I did the best I can. But there's so many more that we could have placed up on this um, wall of fame. So um, I put them by their last names there, as you can see there, just, um, various different time periods. Um, two fun things about the U.S., on this left side here, you notice it's, it's, it's Anchorage, um, Alaska there, and you can read there that there's 22 hours of sunlight in the summertime. And I just had a friend who recently was up in Alaska, he told me that he woke up one time at 2 in the morning, he thought he was late for work and realized it was only 2 in the morning, he had to go back to bed. And the last one there, you can see the caverns, the U.S. has the largest cavern system in the world. There's one not too far from here, House Caverns, about an hour... 40 minutes away from here up north. If you're interested in going there, talk to me later. All right. And that's our cruise ship right there on the Panama Canal going through. Just want to share that with you guys. Um, thank you for sleeping. Thank you for being awake. Thank you for chatting. Thank you so much. Some of you were on, on devices that you should not have been on. You know who you are. I see some of you right now, Stephen. Um, now you're on video. We all got it unmarked down there. Uh, we have some females over here on their phones, too. They're looking for facts about the, what, what we're traveling to, looking for their picture, I guess, uh, as we went through. Guys, let us pray, and let us thank God that we have, we're in a country that we can go out for lunch and find food in no time flat, where many places that we went to, it was not that easy, some places. So just something to think about when we go out to eat. The finals were mentioned earlier. Let's pray. Gentlemen, if you have your hood on, Daniel, let's take it off. Thank you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see um, this world 
that is post-flood. And we can look at it and go, wow, there's some beautiful places. But, Lord, we understand that what we see today, it is garbage compared to what he had before the flood. It is amazing what you have waiting for us. And we can't wait to see um, that soon. Bless the food that can be blessed, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Future seniors, you may go first. Future seniors. Oh, the time? 109. Future seniors, go ahead. 